Thank you very much, Lucia. Uh, welcome everybody here in the room as well. And also thank you to Sol and the whole team behind to make possible this gathering, which I really feel harder to be part. Um, I'm, I'm a really strong defendant of these kind of meetings in as much as they are not just uh, part of the market, but part of this self-reflective moment, which is very much needed, even in the world of the economy. And of course, very much an honor to be in conversation with friends, colleague uh, Elvira Changani Oze, right now director of this institution, MACBA, the Museum of Contemporary Art of Barcelona. As a brief introduction to Elvira, I would just say she's also well, she's always she's always been and uh, she always came across to me as a powerful person, uh, a person who was full of desire, full of um, you know strong ideas. Her actual position, I think, it's it's quite. Um, um, something to uh, celebrate for everyone. I mean, if you look at the press when she was appointed director, I mean, there was no doubt that this is what we were all looking for. What were we looking for? We were looking for a person able to convey all the demands we uh, kind of project on institutions like this, like a museum of contemporary art. Um, she represents um, a, a long-term, long-standing um, career, a long-term sort of accumulation of ideas that um, are kind of waiting to transform the museum in a place where reparation is um, conducted. In this sense, um, she's in, 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 in the best of the positions to accomplish that. She comes from an equatorial Guinea, uh, from a Guinean family, uh, even though she's always been uh, living in Spain, except for the last part of the last years of her life, when she's been um, working in London, uh, most recently as the director of the showroom gallery, and also as um, when she was senior curator at, um, uh, at the Creative Time. But uh, most important for the conversation we're gonna have, when she was um, curator of international art at Tate Modern, and she was also um, responsible for bringing the art of the African diaspora to the collections of Tate. I could uh, go on and actually um, speak about her, her works, her exhibitions. She um, recently wrote um, an extraordinary piece for a conference uh, at the Mafra Foundation in which she was basically laying down and showing her cards uh, in terms of what is going to be, um, you know, to be director of a public institution like this. And she was referring to a book by Paul Gilroy, uh, Against the Race, Imagining Political Culture Beyond the Color Line. And a book that is kind of a pivotal reference to understand what is inclusiveness in the art world. And I, I guess for sure, for Elvira, this is still quite a, uh, a reference. Um, in this sense, she has curated uh, exhibitions like Contra la Raza, which was presented in Foto España in 2020, or um, before uh, another exhibition, Erase Who I Am, at the Centro Atlantico de Arte Moderno uh, in Las Palmas, the Gran Canaria, where she worked as a curator. I think that the, the, the debate we have to really deal with here this morning, it's, it's a debate that may look like uh, only pertaining to the arbol, to public institutions, but indeed it is also uh, a matter of interest for the arbol and, and, and the art market. Not long ago, I mean, we were basically concerned about the balance between local and international, and this museum was quite an example of this very uh, 
provincial debate, let me put it this way, but then, uh, or why not? I mean, if you look at the structure in London, you know, um, Tate and, and Tate Mother, what is it different? I mean, one is for, let's say, the national, the local, and the other one is for the more, more cosmopolitan, international uh, debates and, and names and artists. But now, I mean, more recently, uh, gender, race, color, open, the gates and road, the quotas, not to mention the importance of collectives, which seem, I mean, here's been mentioned, the Venice Biennale, but what about Documenta? Last summer, it's been quite a challenge for the art market in as much as it represented a, a plethora of collectives being um, framed in the art world, yet being very elusive for the economies of the art world. So this is another challenge to what inclusiveness can be. So what would I would like to say to end my preliminary remarks before we uh, can plunge into the conversation is that this process, this process of inclusivity, as someone said, by you know by polarizing this exclusivity, it's a never expanding process that makes inclusiveness an endless task. You know, in the little introduction I wrote for this, I said, uh, what about the non-human entities, you know? So basically the question is, um, I mean, can the art, I mean, is the art market ready to perform um, as, with as much flexibility as the public, the range of public institutions are somehow obliged nowadays? I mean, is the art market able to perform um, with these sort of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, agility? I think, of course, it can. The question is, why is not happening as often as we wish? So, Elvira, if you want to, to start with this first question. Um, well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me also to share uh, this platform with you and to Welcome everybody here, if you were not early in the morning, and welcome everybody in their houses, so later in the future, when you watch this um, in the video channel of the platform. Um, I think that, that you, you have talked about many things. I was like taking note of, whoa, there is a lot that I love to say. Um, but one in the start, and I think it's a, it's a great question, I think that can be applied to what we are dealing with today, which is how the gallery world can be more inclusive. <laughs> And one of the things that uh, it happens to me when you grow up, let's say, as a post-colonial figure <laughs> without knowing that the, the, that is who you are or, or who are you being framed by, uh, is to question the framework. Uh, what makes uh, necessary that in sense of inclusiveness? No? What is normativity? What is the, let's say, the, the, the element of normalization or normativization that a structure has to go through in order to be able to include others that are not considered the norm. And I think that's perhaps a question for all of you, no? in the art world, for a question for UCI and the teams, all and others that have been considering this platform to reflect on, on that. No? But there are several issues here. One is that uh, I think there was something that uh, Julia was saying no, that there is a sense of interdependency that obviously is connected. Um, one of the critical things, like if we if we go to look at my CV, and I use this as a case study, and then perhaps we can take it from there to something more abstract, uh, which is the time when I joined Tate and Tate Modern. As you say, no, funny enough, Tate Britain, Tate Modern, Tate. Uh, Liverpool, all the tastes, including the website that was considered for a while uh, um, another institution, right? Like there is all these elements that constitute that. But also the fact that Tate was collecting and in relation to many people in this room for a national collection. So it doesn't matter, no, in a way like the, 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 the institutions are vehicles of something larger. And that larger thing I think is, needs to be questioned because if you are to be, let's say, in this particular case, the national collection of the UK, you will be, you know, the one to perform also what being um, part of the United Kingdom. What is the, what is that, uh, what is that 
nation and, and, and what is the nationness says about the history, right? And how much diversity you need to bring in in order to be able to tell that story. And I think the, the key issue and, I, and the reason why I put this example has to do with the moment that I arrived to Tate when uh, Tate was considering as much as he has been doing with Latin America and other parts of Europe and, and the rest of the world to include modern and contemporary African art in his collection. But he didn't have a strategy. And he didn't, uh, and it hasn't considered at, the, at that point what it means to include within that, uh, the same notion of Africanness. Uh, what was, let's say, the black art that was produced by the African diaspora, both in the Americas and in the rest of the world, no? and particularly in Britain, how that history of that particular moment had a space. And, and it was interesting, and I said this because for me, the, 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 the search for inclusiveness has to do with a higher state that we haven't been able to arrive yet. No? Like a, we are progressing towards a place where there is no need to be inclusive. I don't know if you agree with me, but I think that's the point, no? Like, at some point, it would, somebody's like that in here. We can talk about it later. But, I, but what I mean is that the normativity had to go beyond, like, how to go beyond the moment that we are, the moment and place that we are now. So what happened in that moment in, in a Tate is that we start working on this strategy. We have a acquisitions committee, but also we start defining Africanness in order to be included in the collection. And as you said, this is a major public institution that had to imagine what is doing in their side in order to bring this to the collection and to bring this to the national narrative, together with other institutions such as Victoria and Albert Museum or the National Galleries, right? So that's what I mean is to, that moment was very, very, very interesting. What happened at the time is that also 154 started the, the Contemporary African Art Fair, and, and many artists from the continent had a platform uh, that was prompted by the, 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 the gallery world in order to be on display in London. So I think that kind of configuration made possible, perhaps, uh, let's say, the work of many uh, pioneers in the gallery world that were trying to be inclusive in relation to race, because race is one of the aspects that can be included, but there are others, as we know, gender is another thing, uh, was, uh, the, the, the diversity in terms of neurology or ableism, etc. right? Like, all these things that had to be considered. But also, the fact that in all of these things, what we are looking for, more than people, I mean, those categories that, that, that determine inclusiveness are not aesthetic categories. You need good artworks, right? And you need people that look critically to the artwork. But also, you need brave people <laughs> that is uh, capable to challenge those, those normative frameworks. So, excellent. So, w while you were at the Acquisitions Committee at Tate uh, yesterday, uh, as we were chatting over the phone preparing this conversation, you mentioned how positive was the reaction of the gallery system, how receptive they were to these policies. Um, how could you describe this collaboration, um, you know, between the art world and the public institution sector in these terms? I think, no, that's a great question. I think uh, what, what happened at that moment is that all of a sudden, the local expertise in uh, African continent and the di African diaspora has start to flourish. Find colleagues, not only the galleries that have been working there, and I'm not gonna name some, but maybe most of you know now that are working for instance in South Africa or, or uh, in other areas like uh, north of Africa and Marrakech and other places. Many independent places start to think about what it will be to in immerse themselves in the gallery world. But what is interesting, I think, at the time is that there is a configuration of Western galleries and Western platform to support colleagues in the field somewhere else in the world, right? And particularly in that case, in the continent. So that conversation also opens up a debate of what was happening in the continent, no? And fairs like in Johannesburg or Cape Town start to open up as well. So what I mean is that Perhaps we carry the this, this steam, let's say, as public institution, no? and I'm talking now about MACPA, but without the support, like the, let's say the equal support uh, from public to private, from private to public, 
this will never happen, right? And and I say this because we also discussed yesterday. And that's the problem when you talk <laughs> pre-chat that so somehow you consume some of the issues. But what I think is important is that you you are brave. No, well, I think institutions are brave, but we are also legitimized by a world that then is follow. Uh, that could be perhaps no, with uh, follows the same bravery, right? Like the same, the same argument. And without the acknowledgement of that interdependency, we have a problem. Uh, I'm very much. You talked about documenta, and I'm very much a follower of structures that are para institutional. That, that happens perhaps before the institutions are set up or in spite of the, uh, let's say, the cultural institution that sits in those particular contexts. So that is a, a word that I share it. But I also, I think in the most um, fruitful uh, backgrounds or context, the work that um, these institutions have done are also followed or supported with you know, private enterprises. And I think this is a, there are some of these uh, examples in Africa that maybe we could look at. Let's, let's stop for a second on this issue because I think it's quite important because we always think of inclusiveness in terms of uh, gender, race, color, etc., neurodivergence, which crippled movement like they, it's called now. But then when we need comes to collectives, you know, I mean, we, we realized the, the art market, and especially this summer, there was kind of a harsh reaction to that massive reality. So what is to be done in this sense? I mean, I think Documenta poses to us all, uh, particularly you guys in the room, a, 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 a crisis, no? And a, and a moment of self-reflection. I remember uh, particularly, and I'm not gonna say names again, Keeping all these secrets, you see. <laughs> Before uh, the document I started, and there was already this skepticism, no? and I was saying, you know, the fact that this happened in the document, in the only place in the world, by the way, that something like that can happen, doesn't, you know, erase everything else that is in the gallery world, for instance. No? The art market could benefit of some of these initiatives, and, it, and the fact that it happens doesn't mean that everything else is erased. You mentioned earlier, you know, and we have a conversation, I think is later today, tomorrow, about Venice, right? Which, in a way, many people have been um, uh, criticizing or establishing how different it is, no? and how marketplace is so present in the exhibition. I think we have to understand that this interdependency, this economic uh, intertwinedness that exists in all this work made possible something, right? There, there are things that, if you agree with me, probably, <laughs> that without the Harold Simmons uh, edition of Documenta, many of us wouldn't be here. Many of the art movement wouldn't have happened, right? So I think it's, we are too close to see how uh, projects like Documenta 15 can also bring about some change uh, in, in, in the, not only in the gallery world, but also in the art world per se, no? because I think they create the dynamics that also challenge uh, institutions like a museum. Now that you mentioned Hanel Simon, I think that it, it, it deserves to be mentioned also the pioneering work of uh, the much regretted laws of Aukri and Desor, who actually opened up the gates for uh, you know, I mean, Africa and many other continents to, in, the, in the wider representation of the Argol. And by the way, his term to actually, you know, uh, force or invite the, 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 to focus attention on continents like Africa was coevalness. Mm -hmm. Meaning by that, uh, it is not just a matter of inclusiveness, it is something existing next to us at the same moment, why it is not represented. Yes, and in that sense, coevalness has to do with what I was saying before, right? I think what, what uh, Okui managed to do in that, in both Documenta and Venice, is to keep a balance and reflect the real art world in all its senses and in all its problematics. And I think perhaps people will have felt that Documenta was focused on the specific issues, but I also think that that's necessary for the curators of document that, that at the time they decided they wanted to do that. That doesn't erase everything else that is happening. And that doesn't erase that you can go as a, a gallery uh, or you know, like uh, people in, um, in the same private enterprises linked to the art, because there are many other, um, to go to document and discover something that you were interested in. They were 
many, many talented individuals as well. So I think that there is, I mean, I, I think we need to pass that understanding all of you that have lived experience that was a specific one, that was one that needed to be lived. And, and, and then we'll see what happened. We need this then, I think, to, to engage with it. I have the impression that inclusiveness is a way too shy idea or term for where we are facing now. And I would propose to think of, to rather think of, uh, you know, that we live in, in the age of restitution, reparation, return, especially after Macron's uh, report, you know, which actually brought to attention the, the idea and the, the demand to repair. Yeah. To I mean, pay back. Absolutely. And I think uh, there, there, is, there is, I was thinking in coevalness again, right? Like what it meant to live with certain words for a long time, no? And what it would mean, repair and restitute are two different things, right? And I think one of, one of the issues that, politically speaking, restitution means material, no? Cultural material to be, to be returned, but also uh, in terms of economies. Uh, repair is something else that we can all engage with, right? That has to do with the positionality, that has to do with where we position ourselves to start working towards the sense in which the normal is a larger spectrum of things. And the normal is no longer just a Western category, right? And I think that's one of the things that we need to do, to look at terms and definitions and the institution behind those definitions in a way that will help us to open up the meanings will help us to bring nuance to what it is. And here, that I can say that in a very extra way, but you know, and I know, and you guys know, that this has a root and has a way to being very pragmatic and put it into terms, right? I can talk about the, 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 you know, the way that I could do that in a space like MAGPA, but, but then we're here to hear you talking about how you do that in a space of uh, the gallery world. But I think, the, 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 what I think is we are talking about, and this is Josiah should tell us now why this particular uh, question is looking for opportunities for good work, good artwork, artwork that inspires and motivates us to be in the table, to have platform. And I think that's the key. How do we do that without also um, forgetting? And, this, and I think this is very important uh, that we need to know what are the contexts in which the world are produced, uh, and then support also the context, right? Like, uh, support what is happening somewhere else. Um, another person that I'm not gonna name now was telling me <laughs> that, you know, that we still needed, we're telling us, to, telling a bigger audience that we still need encyclopedic uh, museums. And I was saying, well, I, I have no problem with encyclopedic museums if they are said that they need, uh, you know, the need of restitution the need of the definition, but also if they support encyclopedia museum somewhere else, right? So perhaps the key thing here for a world, gallery world more inclusive is to start supporting that happening somewhere else. Yeah, but that's a great question. I mean, how can we uh, picture a gallery performing a politics of restitution? Uh, often when we think of the art world, it, it, is a, it is an economy that takes something from somewhere to sell it all over the world. So, and this is a pretty much an, attractive, an attract, extractivist principle. Mm -hmm. So if we turn things around, I mean, and we say galleries have to also perform in the age of prostitution, what is the economy? But that's the thing. Like, what I is like the economy? But the thing is that how then can we can we claim, let's say, social justice, but at the same time being in business, right? You and I are like the worst people to talk about this because we don't want a gallery, right? So I feel like it's a very unfair question for us to ask. But what I think is important is that to understand the circular economy, right? And this is something that affects both the gallery world as much as affects the museum. I remember working with Catherine Bourne in, uh, in, at the showroom, and she had this uh, notion of the Iceberian uh, economy, right? And, I, and I, whatever, whoever wanted, it, I can send that to you, and it's online, you can check it. In fact, you can check it on the website of the showroom, it's easier. But what is interesting is that we, there are some people that operate above the surface, and we are very little, we're very privileged, very little we're there. 
but there is a structure underneath that I think we need to be taken care of. And I think if we offer a space for that structure to surface, perhaps to transform into a volcano, for all we know, to help us to transform the art world, then we, uh, we, we will be doing a favor, we will be doing this, this um, inclusiveness a favor. But I also think that we need to look at uh, the history, right? Like I remember, Josia, you were here introducing us to, in a beautiful way to Joan de Muga, uh, an incredible pioneer of the gallery world in Barcelona, who uh, was doing in the 70s what you guys are doing right now, with the difficulties of being in a, uh, you know, although at the time was already his demise, no? but uh, the Franco era, with the difficulties of, as you say, no? trying to create a balance between the local and the international, with the difficulties of open a multi-site space, and imagine something beyond his private venture when he did the spy, spy Pablo no? no? We have exhibitions with Mario Mer, Ruth Nauman, you know, Rebecca Horn, it's incredible. And all of that happened here in Barcelona, and sometimes we don't look at those things because we're private venture. But for me, as much, you know, the, 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 the enterprise that Joan de Muga did, as much as the canalla, no? this, this naughty artist scenes that was multi, transformative, uh, transdisciplinary that existed in Barcelona since the 60s, 70s, and early 80s, is important and is all of that that to me constitute the condition of possibility for the institutions to emerge. And without that, we wouldn't have MACBA. No? And I think there is something about the context and the way that the context has to apprehend what has happened in the past in order to move forward that we need to start cultivating. Also as you know, public programs and, 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 and exhibitions. And I think that's also what takes, no, and I think that's the reason why you gather together every now and then as a, as a as a people from the gallery world to consider what had happened in your field in order to move forward, in order to consider what is possible, no, what you had left behind in order to make your uh, your gallery. What are the, the I, I have met, and, and I have to say, like I, I have met incredible people in my life, no, uh, that had this private venture, and I and they understand the risk, they understand uh, the sometimes the volatile economy that we are all involved in, the socio-political issues, and they they are persisting. And some of them are not rich people that are coming from a wealthy background. They are just brave people that thought in supporting the artists, accompanying the artists through a period of time where they can push, you know, a certain agenda, they will find fulfillment. And I think that's what I what I consider that will open up to a more inclusive world. No, like for me, what happened at Tate at the time and is only a step forward, something that transformed the normal framework. That's the key, right? And for that you need brave people. Thank you for mentioning Joan de Muga because he's indeed a, a quite a remarkable figure that kind of grew out of very local conditions in Barcelona, and, you know, linking the, 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 the past of Joan Miro, Joan Prat, then opening a gallery in 1979, uh, which was a legendary gallery in the city, the Galleria Joan Prat, her, his daughters and the, the actual directors, Patricia de Muga and Marta de Muga, are sitting among us. And then, as Elvira has also mentioned, opening in 1989 a, a, an incredible space that functioned almost like a Kunsthal in the city of Barcelona, bringing Cunelis, Mario Meners, Richard Long, uh, Lourdes Wiener, uh, who else, Orny Graham. So, a, a, a range of projects we would no longer speak of exhibitions of projects that put Barcelona in the, in the map of the European institutions. But, um, so, we, 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 we understand that the art world, the art market, public institutions are really encroach, uh, they, they, they really form an encroached system that can no longer be disentangled, that is to say, if one makes a step forward, the other has to go behind and, and uh, make that sort of progress and advance. So after all your experience, I mean, and now uh, 
getting more focus. I mean, what are you planning to do here at Mac in that sense? Well, um, that's a great question. And it will be unveiled time after time. <laughs> we, want a, we want an answer now. Now. Uh, well, there are, there are many things. I think the, one of the issues that affect the museum, no? most of uh, foremost, is, is the proximity, right? I, I think the... I think it's Marina Garces, the philosopher, that said we, we need to think about where what is the right uh, distance and the right proximity in order to be implying and, and sort of do the, 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 the art of implication, as she calls. No? But I think there is something very important, which is to take stock of that history. Uh, I was saying, for instance, that acknowledging, acknowledging what we own no, as a museum to those spheres that are perhaps counterculture or belong to the gallery sector, etc., we also acknowledge that those are conditions of possibility for the museum to emerge in the late 80s uh, as an idea no, for the foundation of Magba with, with Leopoldo Rodés and the, and the then mayor of Barcelona, no? Vasco Margar. But then we also had to acknowledge the fact that if we give that a space and a platform in the museum, that means that the relationship we establish with galleries today and the relationship we establish with counterculture today are going to be significant for the growth of the museum. Right? There is also something that is very important for me, which is the lean in the team, of course, uh, and I wouldn't do this without my team, uh, is to connect the museum, connect us with the neighborhood, right? The community is not only the artistic, it's not only the people in the field, it's also the people that doesn't feel interpolated by the museum. We need to reconnect with that sphere, with people that feel that we have grown and left them behind, or we have gone in a direction and maybe never grow. Uh, and let them be hard while they were growing somewhere else, right? So that sense of, of, of creating a space, a platform for those voices, for those institutions, para-institution, artist collective, but also the individuals uh, are important. I would love, and I have had conversation with younger galleries no, that are devoting their practice uh, to support young artists in the field, particularly here in Barcelona, that we need to do things together. We might not know what that means, right? But I want to work with the, the gallery sector here. And I have spent a year working with the team to create a structure that will help us and will give us tools in order to do that. And I feel more, I don't know, um, like, I feel lighter now to engage in this relationship with the field here and, and the rest of the world. So it's very exciting that maybe, you know, in a few months or weeks or so, we have conversation with people in the room uh, of projects that we could do in a year or two, so or maybe more. But but that is uh, for me critical, no? To open up the space to create, for instance, you know, like a space. We were saying we need the plaza to come into the museum, right? Like we need, we really need Barcelona City to be inside Magba, no? and and offer those spaces for the communities here and their their incoming communities is also very very important. Very much looking forward, Elvira. Um, maybe uh, it would be right time to the right time to open up the floor to questions among the audience. And we already have one here. I have one prepared just in case people were hesitant that I see you're eager to. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. So I'm and I come out and I'm mostly a sociologist of thought. When I was listening to you, of course, when you were appointed as new director of MACBA, it was a real change. A woman of African descent being a director in a prominent so European institution, it was quite exceptional. And immediately, I was wondering if it could impact the programming, both being a woman and both being so of non-white ethnic origin. And I'm sorry, because well, all the time we have to underscore this when we address you, but well, I think change can really be well moved by people like you. And so I was wondering when you applied for the position and when you probably also were interviewed, did you make statistics about well, the programming of MACBA? Did you calculate the proportion of women who had been exhibited in solo exhibitions in the last few years and of artists of color? And do you have aims? 
at promoting especially these two groups, or do you think that this is not an issue at all? I think I know the, question, the answer, but I would like you to develop it a bit and just to well underscore if this is really important to you and if we really have to face this well issue today in the 21st century. And so being a more contemporary museum, because while well, Nagba before you arrived was a very good institution, it was very deeply rooted in the 20th century. And I think with your appointment, it can really shift from a 20th century museum to a 21st century museum. Do you agree? And what are so your plans regarding diversity in terms of offering women artists and artists of non-white so origin? Thank you. Well, thank you so much. That's, uh, that's how we say here. Uh, Abriel Melon. <laughs> Open the melon. <laughs> no, uh, it's very, it's a very exciting question. Uh, of course, I check. Uh, of course, I didn't make a statistic because I'm aware of most of the human, the, the humanities side and the mathematics. But yes, of course, I realized that there will, there was very few uh, women. Um, something that had been changed very timidly in the past years. Uh, and also very few people of color, obviously. People from different areas of the world, non-Western areas, also very few. There is much, uh, there is so much I can do in five years, and then if, if I'm uh, promoted to five more years, then yes, there will be some things that I can do, but still, I think the, as I said, always I'm not working for the museum that is now, is it the museum that will come, and I need to make structural changes, because what you're talking about is a structural changes. How can we bring the museum to the 21st century? That's the key question. And of course, that is in the back of my mind, but not as a token. Right? Like, I, I'm black and I'm woman, yes, you see it, you can see it, yes, yes, you can touch it, yes, yes, of course, yes. No, because I mean, I, it's as you say, like, I, and I remember I was here in the 90s and that was the issue. Oh, I'm going to do things with African artists. And I say, what about all the other things that I'm interested about? Uh, I had other appetites that not necessarily happens to be or pass by the geography that I come from. I was born in Spain, so maybe I do something about flamenco, who knows, because I was from Cordoba. Right? So uh, what I mean is that we need to assert no, a certain freedom in order to do things, but aware of the context that I'm working in. So these two main things that I mentioned before are awareness of the context, city, neighborhood, uh, artistic community, gallery sector, and other sectors, right, counterculture, etc. that we haven't taken into consideration. But as you know, uh, I'm working uh, since, I wor since 2000, 1920 on a show, uh, on a Pan-Africanist show with the Art Institute of Chicago. I was working on it as a guest curator, so now I'll bring it to Barcelona. So that's one of the things I'm doing. Uh, and this year and next year, there is many women uh, in, the, in the program. But when we were doing that, I didn't say, oh, let's have like 90% women in the program. In fact, I always mention that we are a 90% or 95, I don't know, somebody might help me with this, women in the team, right? I think that the, 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 we need to also change the way that is framed, how gender is treated as an as a, as a exchange uh, currency. We have to change that, right? And, and start working about how we present projects, also that help us to challenge the dramaturgy of the space. I was thinking now, wow. So now in November, uh, we're gonna launch the new presentation of the collection, and I realized we, put the wave in certain installations that are mainly women. Again, it's nothing that I prepare, but of course I am here and I have a position from where I think and where I work. And that, you know, is exposed. And one of the things that for me is very important when I do projects and exhibition is that, and I, and I use it before in terms of the, the let's say the, when I was invited to an institution or, or I did it in the showroom, right? Like, I consider a project or, or an exhibition is not something that happens in the museum. It happens to the museum, right? And this sense of intervening, to finding a space that are going to challenge, you know, and my, my appointment already challenged some of the status quo in which MADBA was set, uh, is already important. But it's like, it's like the Obama thing. I mean, just to be president, you cannot <laughs> get the Nobel Prize. You need to do the work. 
and I'm here doing the work with my team, and I'm here doing the work with the community, and I'm here doing the work with some of these absences that you mentioned. And absent for me is a very important question, right? We will build up on those absences as well. Is there another question? Yes, oh, shorter response. Um, <laughs> hi, uh, my name is Farah. I'm a journalist and uh, also author of a, of a book uh, that, that came out this year called "Take Down: Art and Power in the Digital Age." And really, looking the book looks exactly at what Alain was just asking you on the theme of this, which is how women and artists who are non-white males have been. <laughs> Uh, are suddenly being foregrounded, probably because of movements like hashtag Me Too, Black Lives Matter, these movements have had a big role. So we've talked about that already. I just wanted to know, because many uh, artists who are women artists, or who are women, uh, excuse me, artists who are not white males, tell me, yeah, but we've seen this before. Um, yeah, you know, like for instance, the Gorilla Girls, you know, they did what they did, and then all those campaigns, and then we w went right back to where we started. And so um, I just wondered whether you thought that this, this that we are now on, on a trajectory that is kind of permanent, or is this going to be snapping back again? I mean, the, the cycles of history do exist, I, and you were right to mention that. No? But I think that's what I always say, let me focus on what is yet to come, because I need to create with the team the structure for it to happen. Right? I think the problem would be to say, okay, I'm gonna be here, I, this is my five years, what do I do? I need to have this authorial figure, which I'm totally against. The museum is not autonomous, it's connected to uh, uh, a moment in time, it's connected to a context. How do we engage from this particular gender towards the future? And I think we risk that, but people like us that have worked always against the bigger power, have always known that the rights that we establish are never guaranteed. So you keep, you know, I think the powerful image that you have of me is like, because I'm like ready to jam every time. <laughs> because that's the only way we operate. There's nothing guaranteed. The fact that I'm a director doesn't mean that I'm gonna change everything. And doesn't mean that there's gonna be more women or more directors after me. But I had to make sure that I do the work that is needed in order for it to happen. Right? So I think that it it's, doesn't prevent me from working, the pragmatism of knowing that there, this could be one stage. I'm going to work as is, there's no tomorrow for it to continue. And we live in an era where new rights are constantly emerging, and I don't think we can stop that. You know? okay. So the only thing we can do is keep acknowledging those rights and fight for those rights to be represented in institutions like this, and also in the wider world, in the, either, in the wider art world of the but, art market. But also, but also in, in relation to that independ interdependency that we mentioned before, it's also the acknowledgement of the normal side of things, quote unquote, that this needs to change. That's what I was saying about documenta. Hey, leave a document, it's just what, the, what is happening, right? Like, you have a project in which so much energy, so much power is, in, is presented because it's alive. Leave that to happen and then see what happens. What is the fear? The world that you think that cannot change has already changed, has already changed. That world doesn't exist. We are in a different, we are, we are in a different moment. So I think that's the key, right? Like what, what was happening, in a, in a, here I agree with you, when moments like the Gorilla Girls or, or some other, like for somebody was telling me, I know we should do something about feminism. I'm like, well, feminism is not in my book or something else. But some feminism is, is a war in dispute already, right? If you don't acknowledge that, then you are erasing years of history of people that had thought about womanism or other ways to addressing what womanhood means. So what I mean is that it's on us because we are always working, but it's also on the other side that we, and, and now I'm both, no? this is, <laughs> this, uh, I'm, I'm in this uh, particular gender, no? I'm both the, 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 the normal, let's say, and I'm also the outsider trying to break it and return it and redefine it, right? But I think that's the, that's the key here. So. Uh, we have another question there. Yeah, uh, it's just, I won't make it too long when I ask this question. So I've been a documenter and I was uh, you know, really encouraged about seeing so many young people there. Besides the critic, I thought it was a great show. Uh, maybe I'm the only one. 
But uh, I was thinking, uh, when I look at the title, uh, can we make the gallery work more inclusive? I also think about inclusivity uh, about the audience. How can we get more people in? And of course, more gender, more f people outside from Europe, all that. But also, how can we make it more open? And I think Documenta was maybe the right direction or so. But do you have any attempts in this direction? Yes, I mean, of course, for me, one is to thank you for that, and I also think it was a great show. Uh, the, the, to, for me, that means to change the dramaturgy of uh, the museum or the spaces where you are, right? Many people will not enter to a gallery. There is something about the way we establish the white cube that somehow make people feel that they don't belong. No? Uh, and not everybody has the bravery to say, okay, I don't care, I'm going to jump into it because I have seen this beautiful Joanna Valles in Bombo bon Project that, ah, oh, you know, like, trust me, or oh, I was there in whatever other gallery to see it. And I think what we need to do is to start listening what the younger people is asking, uh, but also what is there, because we know each other, we know the context, uh, but we don't know those that doesn't feel interpolated by the museum. And perhaps, and I think what Documenta 15 did uh, was to bring people that already is doing those works in their context and successfully manage to transform, if no anybody else outside CASA, many people in CASA. And I think that's already something else. And people that went twice and three times to engage there. So I would say transform the paradigm where the museum or the gallery is placed in order to make it successful. One of the things that we are hoping to do, for instance, is to uh, create a, a, a youth council, no, a council that is uh, uh, organized with young, entrepreneurial, fascinating, but also hopefully introvert people that want to be part of this, that have responsibilities beyond the art world, and they want to tell us how they see the world and how they see an institution like MAGMA uh, participating in the world. What are the ideas, but also what are the, the notions of governance that we should consider in order to be more inclusive in that sense? Hmm? Um, we have two remaining questions. I'm not. Hello, I'm Lena from Austria, and I want to really thank you that you look at more the, also the intersectional uh, issues because um, a white man asking, are you going to show more black women now, is a little bit boring to me. <laughs> and there's so many more issues, like, for example, I recently had a small um, um, art fair with an artist and so-called outsider artist, and it went really, really well, like we sold out. But what happens is that they don't get the benefit because the institution that, uh, like the, the workshop that works with them gets the benefit, so he's constantly complaining. And I think that's one of the spots, but I'm so grateful that you mentioned more of these intersectional things because it's also not just about flying people from all over the world to Magba, because it's the sustainability issue, like how do we fly around? So it's more a comment and a thank you, and hopefully you're not going to be reduced to, to the, with the women, black women issue. Thank you so much. Thank no, you. thank you, thank you. And, and I want to uh, use this moment to um, acknowledge, Carlos, your exhibition on Tosquellas, because uh, we were talking about no, neuro, neuro, neurodivergency. And I think it's very important to also consider, no, like what our brood and outsider are has done to the art history, no, and how sceptical perhaps people were at the time, no, but also how, as you were acknowledging, no, how far away from then the circular economy some of these uh, individuals are, no, and and I think this is also a matter of inclusivity, inclusivity, right, inclusiveness. We're not just talking about, you know, gender, race. Uh, non-generational uh, differences, but also those. Yeah, yeah and the question is that there is not only a challenge to who is included or not, but also to the economies that all those individuals carry with them, you know? So this author who might be neurodivergent or whatever else uh, you want to call it, uh, I mean, he cannot or she cannot receive the money from the art market 
because she belongs to a different regime of production, of work, of a different way of understanding the production of culture, and this is what the art market has to come to terms with, I guess. We have another question there. Um, thank you once again for a great conversation. Um, when you talked about uh, inclusivity at the beginning, uh, you mentioned gender, race, color, and collectives. Uh, if you allow me, I would just like to extend it to geographies. Uh, well, namely, I'm from Belgrade, Serbia, so we'll have to point out East Europe, which seems still a little bit not there on the map. Uh, in terms of collectives, maybe more avant-garde collectives like NSK, there was a huge retrospective at the Reina Sofia, etc., etc. Um, but then I will jump to another region that I'm recently working with, uh, which are the Baltics. I'm working with an Estonian photographer, for example, and I think the Baltics are also kind of like not very um, represented. Um, I've also had the terms Balkan and Baltics being confused, which points more to the problematic of these geographies, I think. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned 154, which I think was a great platform um, to, to, to put the African art scene uh, and to get more knowledge uh, about it. Uh, I'm wondering what could be possible platforms apart from art fairs, because I can't possibly imagine an art fair of East European or just Baltic art. Um, but let's say Manifesta in Kosovo could be a platform that maybe put the East European map um, art on the map, even though um, they called it cultural cooperation in the Western Balkans, and this term Western Balkan is also problematic, it's a Western European construct. Um, and also Manifesta has not been specifically inclusive because there has only one Serbian artist. So it's, it's very problematic as a whole, and I'm just wondering what would other platforms be to, to position geographies that are not so um, still present, but that have an art scene and great artists, in my opinion. Thank you. Well, no, thank you so much for, for that. I mean, I think that the, 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 um, what Documenta 15 did was also to produce that sort of uh, rebound effect, right? Like all of a sudden, in particular, I mean, of course, as any curator, they have their own um, I wouldn't say, well, they have their own agenda, which was Lumbog, right? Um, and I think, in my experience, uh, if you were looking for a specific platform, you had to develop, because it has to be from the particular context where things start to change. The, what we have here is an international platform, but without that working and operating for the people locally, it's very difficult that then you know, like you could go up as a singular artist, you could go up, the, I'm saying up from the Iceberian economy that I was talking about earlier, right? Like there is, there is something that one has to engage with and I think in that sense, um, uh, African artists, uh, African artists collective, uh, para institutions in the continent have learned so much about the their own production, about what it was needed there. Apart from, of course, the investment that occurs later on. But if you don't start looking at your own scene, considering also that in the, let's say, in modern times there were also practices as it is in the, in the Easter, um, I would say it's very difficult to, to get to a point where you challenge uh, the status quo. I was thinking now, of the work of Slavs and Tartar that I really look at when I think about the period, what they did, for instance, with the biennial in Slovenia. I think it's very important uh, what they did there. And, and we hope to invite them to do our uh, reading uh, spaces here at Magba when we open the expansion. But this is something that I had to keep in a secret because, <laughs> you know, another secret too. That is just birth to you guys. But yes, but I think it's important to be self aware. Right? Self-aware of what the world that needs to be done, how you have to create and nurture your own scene in order to, to create further platforms. Thank you, Elvira, for your answer to this last question. And I don't want to end this conversation without uh, saying that just tomorrow, um, Elvira will be opening uh, an exhibition on the work of uh, Carrie Mae Wims at the Mafra Foundation, Split uh, 
presentation between the Mafra Foundation and La Capella in Magba. Um, let's mention that Carrie May Williams was the first to contend with Harvard University about the, the girl types of uh, Renty and Delia Taylor, an ongoing, an ongoing file uh, still now that uh, sort of uh, throws lights on what is restitution nowadays, quite a big issue. Thank you so much, Elvira. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.